You're listening to Metal Attack MTL with Double D here on MetalMessiahRadio.com. Welcome to Metal Attack MTL. I'm sitting here with the front woman from a, a band who's making a lot of waves right now, and you don't even have an album out yet. <laughs> uh, the band Huntress. I'm sitting here with Jill Janice. Thanks for uh, your time. Of course. Thanks for having me on today. <laughs> All right. Let's start off. For anyone out there, you know, who hasn't like uh, really heard of you guys, this is the first time they're seeing anything about you guys. Uh, what's Huntress about, and how did it all get started? Well, Huntress is a, a lifelong vision, dream of mine that has finally happened. Uh, I spent many years looking for musicians, um, and I found them in Los Angeles. But um, really, uh, we're true heavy metal. That's that's what we come down to. Is just um, we we stay true to the roots of heavy metal, and uh, we're thrashy. We're fast. We've been called melodic death thrash. Um, so, but I but I think more than any label is just that we're we're heavy metal. Okay, so this is like basically your band, and you, you put it like uh, you went out and put it together yourself. Yeah, well, you know, it it, it takes all of us, you know. And that, look at this guy right here. Hey. That's that's our drummer right there, Carl. How you guys doing? How's it going, Carl? Yeah. yeah. Welcome that's to the that. interview. Hey, yeah. <laughs> barging in. That's right. Just barging right in. Uh, you know, it's it. The Huntress was something I wanted to to start years ago, like I had said, but. Um, no, there were no musicians at the level I needed. That guy right there made it happen. Oh, it's That's basically that guy. all true. I, I take all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, get back here. Where are you going? Oh, I was going to go work. <laughs> I was going to go work. Sure. I was going to have a sound Let's check. Let's have a little fun. Let's, Let's have a little fun. This little PR work right Let's here, all right? Let's have a little fun. So, um, okay, well, so when you guys were putting the band together, what exactly were you looking for, like, in terms of mu- musicianship? Uh, <laughs> yeah, musicianship. Well, you know, he joined up a little bit later into the project. We we had yeah. started up, um, you know, about two years ago, and the original drummer, uh, just we didn't share the same vision. So that, I, I, I ended up firing the original drummer, and um, we, you know, pissed off the rest of the band. But I said, yeah. have have faith, yeah. have faith. And within um, within weeks, literally. Really? I yeah. don't know the whole story, but I was there. Yeah. I was ready. <laughs> he, he well, let's hear it. You're here right now. Magically dropped yeah. into our laps. You know, a phone call happened. He came. Have, he shredded. I had just been in a ton of bands and basically quit all of them and was just like, I'm only going to look for a metal band. And this was the type that I was looking for. And it just fell into the lap, just like Jill said, for me, too. So yeah. it was good. Okay. And I kind of knew them mutually, too, through friends and stuff. So it helps. So when you guys like got together, you put your music together, you know, what inspired you guys to call like the band Huntress? Like, uh, and was this something you guys all agreed upon in- initially? I trademarked the name Huntress long before I ever met these boys. So it was in 2006, it was my first trademark of the name. Uh, it really is a tribute to a deity I worship, um, Artemis, goddess of the hunt. There it is. Mm. Yeah, so it comes back to my pagan beliefs and witchcraft, which uh, drives my songwriting. Okay, um, well, we'll get to a little bit more about that a little, a little bit later, but I wanted to know a little bit. I heard you're an uh, opera singer. Indeed, and so is he. He's actually very good. Yeah, I've just been Great. touring just Baritone relentlessly. Age. No way. Both of you? No, it's all, <laughs> it is all lies. But she has, yeah. So t- tell us uh, about your, your musical backgrounds, uh, like your training, uh, your vocal training, I guess, in the past as a mm. child. Uh, when did this all begin, this opera singing? How did when I was 10 years old, it was the first opera I was cast in. My mother knew I had a big range. You just met my mom? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Sweetheart. Yeah, just met her. Sweetheart. Gave us a bunch of candy. Did, did lots of candy. Oh, yeah, I yeah, never <laughs> stayed with her. Um, but I started training from a very early age. I was born with a four-octave color to a soprano range, which is, you know, something that I feel also um, creates this uh, ability to have a metal range of large capacity and uh, various voices come into play. Uh, I was always a little too unstable for, for theater gotten a lot of fights. Now if I get in fights in metal, it's cool, so I think I've got my place. <laughs> yeah, boost the image eh, for the band, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other hidden musical talents that you would like to, uh, you know, maybe bring out? Sure, the yeah. Band sometime um, in the future? I'm a very, well, I'm a very talented skin flute player. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that one? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope you yeah. got that one. Yeah, so I would love to bring that musically onto the stage yeah. as, as soon Let's as possible. Let's get those talents out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's really the only other talent I have. Okay, well, um, how about, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, buddy. It's all right. Don't be nervous. Okay, okay let's, start, let's go I'll back. I'll that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, uh, yeah. the, you guys released a video for the track uh, Eight of Swords. Uh, this was a while ago. Now, I heard um, this this uh, video was a key to your, um, well, partially key to your success. Uh, you Absolutely guys, it is. So, tell us a little about, little, 
Why am I sneezing? Tell us about that a little bit. It's okay. No, I think the skin flute threw you off there, buddy. It's alright. You need some water. You need some water. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, well, you know, it's, it was all him again. It's, nah. It was all him. Um, we, I'll tell you the backstory. I'll get serious here. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit tired. I've been sleeping in a van. Uh, or lack lack of sleeping in the van, really, I think oh, is what that is. Brutal day, brutal day. <laughs> really tired. Yeah, we had four hours of sleep, and then we just woke <laughs> up at like 6 a.m. and just came right here. Yeah, totally. It was, so. It's been it's been awesome. Um, I'm a witch, and uh, I knew at that moment in time when we just put the band together with Carl, started to get the new format, I knew that we needed a push. I knew that we needed something that would gain us a lot of attention. So I did a tarot reading and I asked the tarot card to reveal one card that would become an epic metal song and also bring us success. Eight of Swords chose us. The card represents self-imprisonment with the freedom attainable only if you uh, choose to free yourself. So at that moment I also decided to abolish every other, um, I went to every other ambition and only focus on Huntress. I lost all of my money um, I now solely living for my purpose, but when the video came out, um, it created such a frenzy. We had uh, nine record labels pushing us to sign. Uh, that was a, just a month or so, a couple months after you had joined the band. Yeah, I'm hitting the year anniversary, I think, right as the album comes out. Yeah, right. yeah. When, when that video hit, uh, we knew it was going to be epic. Um, we didn't know that it was going to be a frenzy, seriously, and it was a little bit stressful. Um, glad we have a good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one month later we signed to Napalm Records and we chose Napalm because I feel that they share the vision that we have. And um, they've been really great with us. Mm -hmm. And they, they actually support us a lot on the road and also in, um, in anything we choose, you know, creatively. They, they've never, ever fucked with us. You must have gotten, like, all kind of, like, maybe crap crappy offers, like, uh, yeah. like, like trying to maybe sell the band just for simply, uh, you know, a sexuality image that you, like, anything like that, or? No, I think, I think more than, well, you know, there's always, we, we were offered some crappy offers in the very beginning, yeah. when we, you know, very like, beginning. I think uh, the offers that we got were more of, like, a question of, like, are you guys serious? Because this is what we're going to offer if you guys are serious. And, you know, it was a gamble with the video. We just kind of did the video, and it was like, Let's do this and just kind of see what happens. And we were, we thought maybe one or two people would bite, but we got a, a ton of offers, <laughs> and it was really nice out of it. Yeah, totally. Well, I heard you guys just uh, shot another video too, not too long ago for uh, Spell Eater. Good times. The title. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Those times, those times don't come back, yeah. Carl. They don't come back. They don't come they, back. They, they won't be coming back. It's in the past. It's in the past. It's moving on. Uh, <laughs> we shot Spell Eater right before we went on tour, like literally days before yeah, we left. Yeah, two days before we left. For, in for the, Pagan in the Fest. Yeah. In the Mojave Desert, which, um, it doesn't snow there. Oh, guess what? It snowed the weekend we shot the Yeah, desert. we went to the desert, and it was the coldest weekend and the windiest weekend. Oh, yeah. It knocked it just, amps over and knocked Blake over, who's six foot four. Knocked our equipment over and just sand all over the place. But it just, you just, we powered through it and made an awesome video. Yeah. And it's going to be super more epic because of that. Yeah, you know? totally. And it comes out, I think, this week, actually. The, the album drops on um, April 27th in the U.K. and Europe. And I think the, uh, the, the video will be out this week as well. And then um, at May 8th is when it drops in the U.S. Actually, by the time this, this, by the time this airs, uh, I think um, the album will have already been released in both uh, overseas and here in North America. So let's just go on with the facade. Okay. Uh, uh, like sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're top of the right charts now. right now. We're we're so we had no now. idea like really that. Yeah. A modest profile yeah. about everything. Yeah, we're trying to really keep humble about you know being the number one metal band uh, in the universe. Okay. Now that the album's out. So now it's past the time that we're getting. So you yeah. guys landed gigs, you know, on Pagan Fest. You guys got spots touring with Dragon Force. Yeah. You guys, um, I looked, I heard you guys are playing some uh, big summer festivals coming up too. In the Europe. And the then. Yeah, okay, the whole Europe. Europe. What have you guys done right? What's the secret to your success, you know, to getting all of these gigs before you even I put out an you, album? I can tell you, it's it's really easy. It's witchcraft. I'm not kidding. You are. I'm not, I'm not kidding when I tell you that witchcraft is absolutely responsible for all of the success of Hunters, and it will continue to be. All right. Um, so what's it like writing songs to encompass a four-octave vocal range? Like, uh... <laughs> we just, you know, as, as the, the dudes, we just go in there, and we're like, we just want to write something awesome. And we just work on it and dial it down and just, like, give drafts to Jill. And, you know, it's, it's a collaborative effort all around, and... We just work with each other and just 
we don't write anything that we don't think is cool. So you yeah, know. absolutely. And then um, the boys will you know bring in riffs, compositions, and like yeah. you said, it is very much a band process. And I'll take them some things home, or what I'll do is I'll give the boys themes. Um, mm-hmm. I write all of the lyrics and the melodies uh, for vocals, um, but you know the boys write these absolutely gnarly riffs, um, you know, dark, dark riffs that, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't survive without, without that input. So it's really, it's a fun process. We work very well together. And I like, I like his style of playing. He does a lot of this. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's Mickey D. It's Mickey D and they're doing great. It is, it is, yeah. Okay, so um, other than the Dragon Force tour, and then you guys, um, like I mentioned, you guys have a few, I, I didn't actually say it, so could you tell us, uh, the listeners, about your uh, future gigs, um, your, your summer tours and stuff like that? Oh, you? yeah, yeah. What's um, in the cards for well, Huntress? <laughs> well, we, we are just coming off our first national tour with Pagan Fest here in the U.S. We are now on tour with Dragon Force and Holy Grail in the U.S. as well. And um, okay. they can't read. Oh, in Canada. Oh, and, oh we've done I Canada as well. Oh, that's, that's cool, whatever. Um, so yeah, there you go, Canada now, and then we go home for a hot minute to LA. Yeah, we're home for just like a couple of days, and then we're off to Europe for the summer festivals. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we come home from that, and we have a couple gigs, but we're just in the middle of filling out the rest of the year. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, we're, we're headlining the Tidal Wave Festival in San Francisco, and again, that came to us long before we even, um, you know, had a record done. You know, it's, it's, in all seriousness, we are astounded at the faith people have in Huntress uh, after hearing only one song. There are many opportunities that have come to us, and of course, you know, I do strongly believe that uh, a lot of it is witchcraft, but much, much of it is due to uh, five talented people uh, working together on one vision and um, being uncompromising with that vision. Like Carl said, he got fed up and quit every, every other band and was waiting for only a, the right metal project. And I did the same. Like I, I stopped everything else, and I was just focused on doing one thing, and that was, was you know, seeing that Huntress would, would come to, to reality. So I feel that that, for anyone and any musician that wants to achieve success, truly um, focusing on one purpose only and, and being uncompromising with your integrity, I feel that many things will come to you. One last question before you guys okay. go. Mm-hmm. If two bands fucked, okay, and Huntress mm-hmm. was the child, <laughs> who would the parents be? Well, we, we know it would definitely be Merciful Fate would yeah, be one Merciful of the parents. Merciful Fate and... Uh, Probably Lita Ford. Lita Ford, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe mixed with Priest. Yeah, no, really, uh, it, does, it doesn't have to be... I, actually, it would be good if uh, we were conceived by Rob Halford and King Diamond. Yeah. Anally. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has to be absolute gay sex. Like I'm talking, that's how Huntress was birthed. Yes. Well, you're playing the right venue tonight uh, for. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, oh yeah, I, we're I, in the gay neighborhood yeah. of Montreal today. I was, I was stoked to like step out of the van and see all the rainbow flags and nude male dancers and butt <laughs> plugs. I'm stoked. Hey guys, cool. Right. Pause in the interview for him to do. I think we're, we're actually done. Right. This is Blake, uh, by the way. Hey, hey uh, guitarist. <laughs> right. It's time for that. All right, let's do it. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. sir. You're listening to Metal Attack MTL with Double D here on MetalMessiahRadio.com.